Hello everyone. Welcome to this session on future of cyber security. Cyber security is the practice of protecting networks, systems, hardware and data from digital attacks. A strong security infrastructure includes multiple layers of protection dispersed throughout a company's computers, programs and networks. In this session you will learn what is cyber security and what is the future scope of it. So without further ado, let's start with the session. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you'll never miss any update from us. The world came crashing down in the year 1999 when the Melissa virus came in and unleashed havoc on hundreds of companies including the tech giant Microsoft. So this one virus that could attach itself to a Microsoft Word file made a financial dent of around 80 million dollars globally. Before this incident and even after decades the world has been constantly evolving around making strides to ensure that they are protected against such malicious attacks strategies teams research and hundreds of millions of dollars have been invested only to protect organizations against cyber attacks so in this video we will be discussing what is the future of cyber security and how you can be one amongst the many in protecting organizations and user data around the globe let us begin by understanding what exactly is cyber attack a cyber attack is an attempt to gain unauthorized access to a computer computing system or computer network with the intent to cause damage cyber attacks aim to disable disrupt destroy or control computer systems or to alter block delete manipulate or even steal the data held within these systems next let's discuss the evolution of cyber attacks below we detail a number of cyber attacks that have shaped the cyber crime history so to begin with we have creeper and reaper so we can thank bob thomas bbn technologies engineer for creating the first computer virus in early 1970 the engineer wrote the code to a program that could move between computers and display a message once it landed the message said i am the creeper catch me if you can in response to this joke thomas's friend and coworker ray tomlinson wrote another code that could not only move from computer to computer but could duplicate itself as a travel this then eliminated the creeper and the new code became known as the reaper a little more than an annoyance creeper and reaper were the start of a long history of cyber attacks in 1989 the morris worm was the first ever denial of service attack created to gauge the size of the internet says creator robert morris the worm significantly slowed down every computer it infected it could infect the same computer multiple times until it eventually crashed after proposing to shut down the internet as a solution to the morris worm computer emergency response teams were created to respond to the future cyber emergencies so this instance resulted in the first conviction under the computer fraud and abuse act of 1986 next we have the virus era that is the 1990s so 1990s were deemed the virus era because viruses such as i love you and melissa infected tens of millions of computers causing email systems to crash down the world and costing millions of dollars unfortunately Most of the emails that were compromised were unintended victims of inadequate security solutions. Primarily focused on financial gains or strategic objectives, these attacks became headline news as they took center stage in the world of cyber attacks. Moving on, let's see various types of cyber attacks. Basically, cyber attacks are classified into two types. One is the web-based attacks, the other one system-based attacks. Web-based attacks are the attacks which occur on a website or web applications some of the important web based attacks are as follows so the first one we have injection attack so injection attack is an attack in which some data will be injected into a web application to manipulate the application and fetch the required information as an example we have sql injection code injection log injection xml injection and etc the second one is dns spoofing DNS spoofing is a type of computer security hacking whereby data is introduced into a DNS resolver's cache causing the name server to return an incorrect IP address diverting traffic to the attacker's computer or any other computer the DNS spoofing attacks can go on for a long period of time without being detected and can cause serious security issues next we have session hijacking So it is a security attack on a user's session over a protected network. 
web applications create cookies to store the state and user sessions. By stealing the cookies, an attacker can have access to all of the user data. The next type we have is phishing. So phishing is a type of attack which attempts to steal sensitive information like user login credentials and credit card numbers. So it occurs when an attacker is masquerading as a trustworthy entity in electronic communication. Moving on, we have brute force. This is a type of attack which uses a trial and error method. So this attack generates a large number of guesses and validates them to obtain actual data like user passwords and personal identification numbers. This attack may be used by the criminals to crack encrypted data or by security analysts to test an organization's network security. The last one is your denial of service. So it is an attack which meant to make a server or a network resource unavailable to the users. So it accomplishes this by flooding the target with traffic or sending it information that triggers a crash. It uses a single system and a single internet connection to attack a server. Let's take a look into system-based attacks. These are the attacks that are intended to compromise a computer or a computer network. Some of the important system-based attacks are as follows. First, we have virus. It is a type of malicious software program that spread throughout the computer files without the knowledge of a user. So it is a self-replicating malicious computer program that replicates by inserting copies of itself into other programs when executed. Also, it can execute instructions that cause harm to the system. Secondly, we have worms. So worm is a type of malware whose primary function is to replicate itself to spread to uninfected computers. It works the same as a computer virus. Worms often originate from email attachments that appear to be from trusted senders. Next, we have Trojan horse. So it is a malicious program that occurs unexpected changes to computer settings and unusual activity even when the computer should be idle. It misleads the user of its true intent. It appears to be a normal application, but when opened or executed, some malicious code will run in the background. Next, we have backdoors. So it is a method that bypasses the normal authentication process. A developer may create a backdoor so that an application or an operating system can be accessed for troubleshooting or other purposes. Lastly, we have bots. A bot, short for robot, is an automated process that interacts with other network services. Some bots programs run automatically while others only execute commands when they receive specific input. Common examples of bots programs are crawler, chatroom bots and malicious bots. While these cyber attacks opened a new space for cyber criminals, they also taught the world that with greater connectivity comes greater threats and thus cyber security was born. So cyber security is the practice of protecting critical systems and sensitive information from digital attacks. Just a quick info guys, if you want to make a career in cyber security, then IntelliPath has a post-graduation certification in cyber security and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts. Also known as IT security, cyber security measures are designed to combat the threats against network systems and application, whether those threats originate from inside or outside of an organization. Now, let's discuss about the importance of cybersecurity. Given the rapidly evolving technological landscape and the fact that adoption of software is ever increasing across various sectors including finance, government, military, retail, hospitals, education, energy, to name a few, more and more information is becoming digital and accessible through wireless and wired digital communication networks and across the omnipresent internet. All this highly sensitive information is of great value to criminals and evildoers which is why it is important to protect it using strong cyber security measures and process. The importance of cyber security is to combat with the varieties of cyber attacks. It enables credibility. The tech users are vulnerable due to data theft which is of great value and that's where our cyber security comes into picture. It could save millions of dollars by saving the data. Cloud storage needs protection, which in turn requires cyber security. And to stop the increasing 
cybercrime rate. Now that we are aware of the importance of cybersecurity, let us take a look into the data around how many cyber attacks occur every minute or second. So in 1970, the world experienced its first cyber attack. What first started as a harmless joke paved the way for a new wave of criminality, which is cybercrime. Since then, attacks have been become more sophisticated with the use of malware, ransomware and phishing attacks among many others. So in fact, according to Security Magazine, today's hackers attack computers with internet access every 39 seconds on average. So in today's computerized world, new risks emerge every hour of every day. Connecting to the internet opens up the possibility of a hacker targeting your organization. Cybercrime is becoming big business and cyber risk is a focus of organizations and governments globally. Monetary and reputational risks are high if organizations don't have an appropriate cybersecurity plan. A cybersecurity breaches survey 2018 revealed that over 4 in 10, that is 43% businesses and 2 in 10, around 19% charities in the UK suffered a cyber attack. The survey found that 38% of small businesses had spent nothing at all to protect themselves from cybersecurity threats. A separate survey also found that a third of UK small businesses are risking their online safety by operating at or below the security poverty line. The most frequent types of cyber criminal activity were sending fraudulent emails and impersonating organizations online. Malicious emails were also found to be the most common type of cyber attacks in the internet security and threat report. The consequences of cyber crime are costly as the total average cost of a data breach in 2019 is $3.92 million in research conducted by the Poneman. Institute. Now that uh, we are aware of the frequency of cyber attacks, so let us discuss about the effective cyber security strategies that can be implemented in order to overcome these cyber attacks from the criminals. First of all, there is no one size fits all approach when creating a cyber security strategy, as uh, every business need is unique. So, in this section, so we just walk through eight steps that any organization can use as a model to develop and implement a successful security strategy. So the first one is to conduct a security risk assessment. An IT enterprise security risk assessment is performed for organizations to assess, identify and modify their overall security posture. Second one would be to set your security goals. A key component of the cyber security strategy is to ensure that it aligns or is in step with the business goals of the company. So it is very important to set your security goals accordingly. Next, we have to evaluate our technology to determine if these systems meet security best practices, understand how they function on the network and who supports the technology within the business. Next, we have to select a security framework. A security framework will provide guidance on the controls needed to continuously monitor and measure the security posture of your organization. Moving on, we have to review the security policies. To ensure security policies are up to date and address emerging threats, a thorough review of the policies is very much recommended. Later, we have to create a risk management plan. This proactive approach makes it possible for the businesses to identify and analyze the risk that could potentially adversely the business before they occur. Next, we have to implement our security strategy. At this stage of the strategy, assessments are near completion along with policy plans. So one has to prioritize the remediation efforts and assign the tasks to the teams so that they can implement the security strategy accordingly. And as the last step, so we have to evaluate our security strategy. So it is imperative that the security strategy be monitored and tested regularly to ensure the goals of the strategy align with the threat landscape. Cyber security companies have evolved over the years to stay ahead of the cyber crime industry but in order for us to explore where the future of security is headed we must understand its origins. So now looking ahead a few themes around the future of cyber security appear so let's take a look. 
For one, a greater focus on prevention and preparedness will be vital. Response planning for a security incident or data breach is very much necessary. Incident preparedness and response playbooks will likely become more commonplace. Employee training at every level will mitigate the role of human error as well. And as regulatory concerns become more urgent, ensuring cyber security programs are robust enough to pass muster during audits or compliance assessments will likely be top of mind. Businesses may want to focus first and foremost on how they can secure their businesses today. So building a strong foundation of good cyber security habits and best practices is necessary as attacks continue to evolve. It's hard to look at the calendar and make predictions about what the future will hold, especially in an industry as complex and fast-paced as cyber security. But by taking the time now to build that baseline, you can set your business up for lasting success as changes arise and new threats appear, whatever they may be. We hope this helps to gain some knowledge about various aspects of cybersecurity and its implementation. Thank you so much. Just a quick info guys. If you want to make a career in cybersecurity, then Intellipat has a post-graduation certification in cybersecurity and ethical hacking by ENICT Academy, MNIT Jaipur. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by MNIT professors and industry experts.